Drones are proving to be a very useful tool for public safety agencies, especially when they're equipped with a thermal imaging camera. This is the Autel Evo 2 Dual. I decided to do this video because there's not a lot of information out there yet on this particular unit, and I think it's a really good choice for public safety. This kit, I believe, is one of the best configurations for public safety. So this is the uh, case that it comes in, the GPC case, a watertight case. You can see it's a appropriate size, very easy for you to carry in your squad car or fire rig. We got a, a total of three batteries that are included with the kit, um, a four port bank charger, a Fox free lighting system. I have another video about this lighting system. And then of course we have the remote controller. You lift up the tray and there's some more accessories underneath. It comes with a 12 volt car charger some extra propellers, and some cabling. You'll notice that in the kit, there's some other items that I've added. These are optional items, but I'll explain what they are and why they may be a, a good fit. This is a very robust airframe, capable of withstanding some pretty powerful winds. You can see that it's a, a foldable design, so it can be pretty quickly deployed, but probably the, the most attractive feature of this aircraft is this high resolution thermal camera, the 640 by 512, uh, really a, uh, an excellent thermal camera option. And then it's coupled with a, an optical sensor that has a, a nice high resolution optical camera and a very good quality 8K video camera that has uh, the capabilities of digital zoom incidentally. Really great flying characteristics. We'll post some video for you to see how this thing handles, but it does a, a great job. I'm not usually a fan of digital zoom on cameras, but this being such a high resolution camera to begin with, digital zoom is actually pretty good. It's pretty useful. As an added accessory, you can purchase this device, which is called the Live Deck. The live deck essentially receives the signal from the aircraft. And this is a great option if you want to set this up in your command bus. There's an HDMI out, a couple of other outputs here for you to uh, pull video out of this thing. This can be up to five kilometers away from the aircraft and you can hook it up to a flat screen television or computer monitor or whatever device that you have handy. This is the DJI Mavic 2 Dual, and this one is really a popular unit for public safety agencies, especially for those starting out. It was one of the first units that was introduced that really hit that price point, I think, that a lot of public safety agencies could afford uh, with a lot of accessories, extra batteries, a bank charger, all of that stuff, you could still come in under $5,000. I just wanted to explain the difference between the thermal imaging systems on these two drones. This is an illustration of the sensor size of the thermal imagers. So on the lower left corner, this is a depiction of the DJI Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual. And this is the 160 by 120 resolution of that thermal imaging system. And then we have the Autel Evo 2 Dual, which is 640 by 512. So you can see the resolution is much higher. It's about 16 times more resolution than the Mavic 2 Dual. The detail and the resolution is such that you can actually make out the shape of it, of what it actually is, versus some of the lower resolution thermal cameras that you can really only make out just basic shapes, sort of like a heat blob where this has enough detail where you can actually make out what it is, like, oh, it's a shape of a person or an animal or something like that. So it really is uh, terrific for doing searches, especially for you know, missing persons and things of that nature. Okay, I just wanted to review a couple of features of this remote controller. Like most remotes, we have a takeoff and a land button. We have a return to home button, and we have our standard telemetry, which can tell us the remaining flight battery and the remaining power left in the remote controller, as well as height, distance, airspeed, and all of that. One very nice feature of this remote control, however, is we can get a live display mode from the aircraft by simply just depressing this button on the top right corner. 
and that takes us right into the camera view. Now, if you get to the field and you find that either your smart device has a dead battery or a cable, or maybe you're just in a hurry, you can go ahead and launch the aircraft and have access to most of the controls just through this small screen. So you just depress the wheel, cycle over to the little gear, depress it again, takes us into this sub-menu here where I can now access my display modes. So I have access to the visible camera, the IR camera, or picture-in-picture. -picture. So let's switch over to the visible mode and then I'll press the display button a couple of times to get me back out into that main menu. I have got a couple of programmable buttons on the back of the remote which I can use to switch between the map and the live view or I can make the camera tilt up and down and then there's a couple other functions in there that I could use and of course I have the start and stop video and to take a photo all very accessible here with this small remote. You can configure these a number of different ways this one I have set up with, it's a, actually a DJI product, it's a, called a Crystal Sky, it's a, like a ruggedized tablet if you will, but you can also use a phone or an iPad or something like that. Uh, but I'm finding that a lot of public safety agencies are really going more for this because of its ability to operate in adverse weather conditions and other features like a hot swappable battery, things like that, that really just add a lot of value. I um, also just want to point out that there's a mounting system on here. Uh, this one is manufactured by a company called Flying High USA. I believe it was the invention, if you will, of Garrett Brill, who's a firefighter who really does a lot of work for identifying uh, what's the best equipment for public safety agencies. So this is a beautifully machined aluminum uh, adapter which makes this Crystal Sky usable. And yeah, the Crystal Sky does run the Autel uh, Explorer app, so it, it makes for a very nice solution. Uh, with this mounting system here, the center of gravity, uh, pretty spot on, you can adjust it you know, to your liking, um, but it, it is really a good solution for that. The Autel Evo 2 Dual does not impose any sort of geo restrictions, so if you're operating in and around airspace, say close to an airport, the aircraft in the software will warn you that you're in controlled airspace, but will not prevent you from taking off. That's a key factor in public safety operations. On the other hand, the DJI Enterprise aircraft, they do impose those geo restrictions. You can unlock them, however you would require an internet connection to do so. Sometimes that's a little troublesome or cumbersome if you're in a high risk environment or you're needing to get the aircraft in the air. Okay, just a couple of final thoughts. If you're starting a program, you need to really consider what you want this aircraft to do. Are you planning on doing search and rescue? Do you want to document crime scenes or accident scenes? Are you planning on doing indoor searches, uh, assisting your SWAT team, maybe working or assisting the fire department? You have to really give some consideration to how you're going to put this aircraft into service. Once you understand what you want it to do, then it's time to start looking for a piece of equipment that will do those things. There is no such thing as one drone fits all. There is no drone that has every feature that you're going to need. What you need to do is look at a piece of equipment that checks as many boxes as you can. If you can get it to do 70% of all the different things you want it to do, maybe that's a great place to start. And then as you develop your program, then you can start adding other pieces of equipment to fill in those blanks. This is a pretty versatile piece of equipment. The Evo 2 Dual has a great optical camera. It has a great thermal camera. It has some functionality for mapping. There's some functionality built right into the app. They also are including a one-year subscription to PIX4D React. So that's a pretty good application for documenting scenes. So all of those things together add some functionality. It, it will check a lot of boxes. It may not check every box. Uh, it may have some shortcomings, you know, for certain things that you want it to do. It's, you know, it's not IP rated in terms of being able to operate it in rain or snow and that sort of thing. If that's a functionality that you need, maybe you need to look for a matrice or something like that. 
But that being said, uh, if you're just starting a program or you want something with really solid thermal capabilities, this is a great recommendation. You will have to spend some extra money if you want a proper display. So, you know, the system uh, pricing, you're going to have to contact a person like me who is an authorized dealer to get the pricing information. We're not allowed to give that information out just openly. But um, I will warn you that if you want a proper display, you're probably going to have to spend an extra $900 to $1,000 to get this set up. It's all going to depend on what you need it to do, what your budget is, and where you want to go with your program. Uh, if I have any other advice for you, it is to talk to other agencies, see what they're using, get recommendations from people that are in the industry and that are actually using this piece of equipment. I'm a dealer in Wisconsin. I'm a retired law enforcement officer. I'm not going to sell anything to public safety that I haven't owned and tested and vetted myself. So I purchased this piece of equipment out of my own funds from my business to test it and evaluate it. I'm comfortable saying that this is a good piece of equipment for public safety. I'm also comfortable saying that the Mavic Enterprise is a good piece of equipment for public safety, but they're different pieces of equipment. They have different capabilities. They have different functionality. So you have to decide what do you want it to do and what are the capabilities that you need it to do and what is your budget. So those are my words of advice. I hope this video helped you. And if you would like to know more, please contact me. Um, I'm Bill Bongo. I'm a retired captain from Green Bay. I run Tidal Town Drones. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.